one of the reasons for success of Bohr's model was spectrum. First, we will discuss here what is spectrum actually and uh, we will go into the detail of hydrogen spectrum afterwards. See, first of all, what is spectrum? What happens here? You take a sample of some element here. For example, we are taking here hydrogen gas in atomic form. So, these are hydrogen atoms here. We have hydrogen atoms. These are not molecules, remember? Otherwise, we, get a, we will get a different type of spectra. So, this is hydrogen atom here. Now, if this sample is irradiated with radiations of a lot of different different wavelengths, then what happens here that this hydrogen atoms absorb certain radiations which you can understand now which radiations will be absorbed by hydrogen atom. This will be given by delta E equal to 13.6 into z square 1 by n 1 square minus 1 by n 2 square. So, whichever energy corresponds to this energy level difference, that energy will be absorbed. And this wavelength corresponding to this radiation or this energy also we can calculate by using the formula delta E equal to H e by lambda. So, corresponding to this, the wavelengths which can excite the electron from one particular shell to other shell can be abs absorbed here. Those radiations will get absorbed. What happens now? Suppose we are putting here at 9 eV energy. This radiation belongs to 9 eV energy. This one belongs to 10.2, this one to 11, this one to 11.5 and this one supposed to 12.1 eV energy. All the energies here we assume are in electron volts. Right. Now, by now you people must be knowing uh, that 10.2 eV is the energy required to excite the electron from first shell of hydrogen atom to second shell. So, this system, this sample is going to absorb this particular wavelength and in the radiations coming out of the atom, this wavelength will not be present, this will be missing. Similarly, 12.1 is the energy which excites the electron from first shell up to third shell. So, this wavelength also will be absorbed by the hydrogen atom sample and this also will be missing in the radiations which are coming out. Now, if we plot these radiations on a graph like this, on this axis we take intensity and on this uh, axis we take wavelengths. Okay. Then uh, increasing order, decreasing order, whatever way we want, he ca it can be taken. If we against these lines uh, in similar manner, suppose this is 9 eV energy, then we have got 10.2, then we have got 11 eV like this. Uh, then this is 11 eV, then 11.5 we have got nearby, then we have got 12.1 like this. This arrangement of lines uh, on a graphical paper, this is known as a spectrum. And so, these lines, arrangement of lines, wavelengths on in a particular fashion is called a spectrum. Now, spectrums are basically of two types. We will discuss that part. One type of spectrum is known as emission spectrum. Other one is known as absorption spectrum. Now, emission spectrum again is of three types. One of them is known as continuous spectrum. Second one is known as line spectrum. And third one is known as band spectrum three types. Now, we will discuss what is first of all emission spectrum and what is absorption spectrum. Just now, I was giving you the example that uh, in this case, certain wavelengths will be absorbed by the hydrogen atom sample and those wavelengths were only two. One was corresponding to 10.2, other one was 12.1. Now, what happens here? We will suppose, we assume here this is energy diagram of hydrogen atom. This is n equal to 1 here. Then this is n equal to 2, n equal to 3, n equal to 4 and this is n equal to 5. 
Suppose we are showing the diagram up to five shells of hydrogen atom. Right now, the present electron is in the ground state at this here. This is called n equal to one is called ground state. Now, what happens here? We provide this electron certain energy, which is corresponding to 10.2 eV and 12.1 eV. As a result, this electron gets excited to third shell by absorbing radiations of 12.1 eV energy. Right now. What happens here that in a normal atom, under normal conditions, an electron can ex can stay in a higher shell only for a few seconds. Actually, not few seconds. We should say only for a fraction of second. Scientists say it is 10 to minus 15 seconds only, up to which the electron can stay in the higher excited state. After this, the electron has to come back to the ground state. This is done in order to save the energy. Actually. All the systems with minimum energy are more stable. The system, a system is most stable when its energy is minimum. If it goes into high excited state, energy of the system increases because you can see if the electron is going up to third shell, it is absorbing 12.1 eV energy. Means energy of the system has absorbed, has increased by 12.1 eV. Obviously, the system will be lesser stable. To increase stability, the electron comes back to ground state so that energy will be minimized and stabilization will increase. What happens now? Understand one thing, uh, once you provide an electron a certain amount of energy corresponding to a particular energy difference, suppose first to fifth or first to fourth, here in this case we have given 12.1 eV energy exactly. So electron directly will go from first shell to third shell. But as I'm telling you, the electron stays in the higher excited state only for a fraction of a second. After that, it is bound to come back. When it comes back, it is not in our control. It is completely upon the wish and will of the electron how it wants to come back. Example I'll show you here. Suppose electron went up to third shell. Now the electron in this case, the electron has gone to third shell by absorbing 12.1 eV energy. Now, when it comes back, it depends simply upon wish and will of the electron. We have no control over the de-excitation process. For example, if the electron wants in one of the atoms, the electron may come back directly to first shell. And in this process, this again will emit energy of 12.1 eV. In another atom, the electron may not come back directly to first shell. It may go first to second shell and then it may come back to first shell. All possible radiations are emitted when an electron de-excites from a higher level to ground shell or any shell, all possible. I will make it more clear, somewhat more clear we will make it. Suppose the electron got excited up to 1, 2, 3, 4. We assume it got excited up to fourth shell. See how many possibilities will be there. Electron, we gave it certain amount of energy, sufficient amount of energy to go up to fourth shell, we gave it. Electron directly goes up to fourth shell. Now, once it comes back, we have no control over it. In one of the atoms of the sample, electron may come back directly. As you can understand, this wavelength will correspond to energy difference of E4 minus E1. Right, E4 minus E1 will be equal to Hc by lambda. So this will be the wavelength emitted here in form of photon. Second one, in second atom, the electron may come back in steps. First it goes to third shell, then it goes to second shell, and then it goes to first shell. So in this case, the electron is going to emit three different wavelengths. Energy of them, if we assume this is E1 here, this is E2, this is E3, and this is E4, then we will have the relation E1 equal to E2 plus E3 plus E4. The energy is going to get conserved, it's never going to change. Okay, remember one thing, we will not get the same relation in lambda. Why? Because if we say E1 is equal to Hc by lambda 1, then as per this relation, we have E1 
equal to hc by lambda 1 plus hc by lambda 2 plus hc by lambda 3. This will be here the relation while E1 will be equal to what? E1 will be equal to hc by lambda 1 and this will be equal to lambda 2 plus lambda 3 plus lambda 4 in this manner here. Got it? So, the relation becomes in lambdas the relation will become 1 by lambda 1 equal to 1 by lambda 2 plus 1 by lambda 3 plus 1 by lambda 4. This is the relation which comes out in energy levels. Anyhow, come back to the state here energy derivations. See now, in second atom electron came in steps, in other atom the electron may directly come to third shell and after that it may jump on to first shell. In another atom, the possibility is that first the electron comes to second shell and from here it comes to first shell. How many different wavelengths will be given? See that part. This is one which will correspond to the difference in energy level of fourth shell to first shell. This will be first energy level here wavelength. Second case will be this one. This is third case. This is fourth case. So, right now we have got four different wavelengths. If you see this one, we will name it as a, uh, E5, E6, E7 and this one will be E8 and this we name as E9. Now, if you see in this case, E2 and E5 are same. Both of them correspond to the energy difference of same energy levels that is E4 minus E3. Energy level of fourth minus energy level of third. Both of them correspond to same only. So, both of them will be counted as 1. Next, if you see this one E8 and E2 plus E3, again they will be same. E2 plus E3 remember. Otherwise, this wavelength is a different one, this wavelength is a different one. right? One formula we can give here simply to find maximum number of different wavelengths which can be given once the electron d excites is n into n minus 1 by very important formula, remember this formula. This formula tells us how many different wavelengths will be given out by an electron once it de excites from some higher shell to ground state. Here n is the number of the shell of the higher level and from here by using this value we get here number of different wavelengths. For example, if the electron got excited to fifth shell, how many different wavelengths can be given? We simply substitute the values, this becomes 5 into 5 minus 1 by 2 and this comes out to be how much? This becomes 5 into 420 by 2 which comes out to be 10. So, total of 10 wavelengths can be given out by the electron when it de excites from fifth shell to ground shell. Remember this is the possibility. This is the number of wavelengths which can be given out not compulsory will be given out. Right. Now, come back to emission spectrum here. In this case what happens? Continuous spectra first we will discuss here. Continuous spectra, in this type of spectra what happens? We get all the wavelengths in a sequence. All the wavelengths we get here. Uh, spectrum, I told you we take here intensity and here we take wavelengths. So, closely placed lines uh, we get here continuous lines. Continuous lines will be there in a particular wavelength range from 2000 you are supposed to 8000 all possible wavelengths we will have continuously. That is why known as continuous spectra. One of the examples of continuous spectra is sunlight, white light. As you know, white light is nothing but Vibgyor, V I B G Y O R, approximately starting from 4200 to 7200. Almost all the wavelengths are found in white light. So, this is called continuous spectra. Continuously we have got lines. Continuously we have got lines. Second one, line spectra. Line spectra, in this type of spectra we get lines which will not be closely placed, very closely placed. The distance actually depends upon this one. This hydrogen atom electron when it got excited up to certain level, suppose fifth level, 
and as we have discussed when it comes back it will give out 10 emissions 10 different wavelengths these 10 wavelengths if we put here obviously you can understand very easily the difference between two energy levels is not going to be same if it is not same the wavelengths also will not be same and when wavelengths are not same here we get them at different locations at different positions like this so 10 wavelengths we will get here closely placed sometimes or sometimes some gaps will be there in this manner we get 10 lines here this is known as line spectra and you can understand it very well the line spectra will be given by atoms remember this part very well once it has been asked in uh, competitive exams now third one in emission spectra is band spectra in band spectra what happens that here in band spectra we get bands closely placed lines we will have like this one two three four like this after that a gap comes again we get a band of lines like this again some distance in this manner remember band spectra is given by molecules as well as ions so band spectra will be given only by molecules or ions not by atoms never by atoms actually come for absorption spectra absorption spectra again we come back to our sample of hydrogen atom and what happens here see that part this hydrogen atom sample as in the beginning I told you suppose we are irradiating this with radiations or different different wavelengths suppose 9 EV this is 10.2 EV this is 11 EV this is 12.1 uh, EV and this is suppose 13 EV like this so we have got 1 2 3 4 5 total 5 wavelengths if I take a spectrum of this incident radiation this is incident radiation here so we will get here 5 lines 1 2 3 4 and here we will get 5 like this we will get 5 lines now once this radiations these radiations pass through the hydrogen atom sample obviously the sample is going to absorb those particular radiations which can excite the electron present in it up to some high excited level in case of hydrogen atom these levels these energies will be number one 10.2 ev and number two 12.1 ev and if we see this is one two three four second and fourth wavelength so once this comes out radiation and we take a spectra of the coming out radiation then this second one and fourth one will be missing in fact we get black lines here dark spots here we get don't we don't get any illuminescence here so this here goes missing this is known as absorption spectra and we say when we compare this with emission spec sorry with the spectra of incident light we say these two lines have been absorbed that is why it is known as absorption spectra absorption spectra and emission spectra of a particular element are complementary to each other wherever in emission spectrum lines are found exactly at those positions in absorption spectra lines go missing right so they are complementary to each other one more thing which you must understand is that the line spectra or absorption spectra are like fingerprints for atoms for elements whenever a new element is discovered to check whether this is a new element or previously it is found on earth what is done that they check the line spectra of that with the existing elements if it matches we say already this element is existing on earth if it does not match it means this is a new element which has come from some other planet or some water otherwise on earth only it has been discovered newly this is how new elements are discovered now hydrogen spectrum already we have discussed that one we have got in that lineman spectra lyman bomber passion bracket and fund series these series we have got here now failure of bohr as we have discussed happened due to number one de broglie equation number two heisenberg once bohr's model could not explain these effects came sommerfeld model sommerfeld is not in uh, the uh, 
competitive exam schedule that much. So, we will not go into details for that one. However, Sommerfeld, what he did, uh, that he said that uh, the orbit uh, which was discovered by Bohr is two types. One will be perfectly circular, other will be elliptical. From here, tried to explain, from here, he tried to explain uh, the splitting of lines.